Crime is a severe issue that has troubled society for a long time. Crime has the power to ruin the lives of people, families, and entire communities. Criminal activity frequently even endangers the offender's own life. This is particularly true when the offenders are particularly unskilled at committing the crimes. Robbery may not be a joke, but these criminals have committed certain acts of stupidity that put them in greater danger than others. And it's difficult to resist laughing at their suffering. These 10 thieves were never intended to be criminal masterminds, so let's just hope that they may find more honorable jobs. Regardless of how stupid they are, keep in mind that all suspects are presumed innocent unless proven guilty in a court of law. In January 1995, MacArthur Wheeler and Clifton Johnson devised a robbery scheme that was so terrible that it served as the basis for research on how people come up with such stupid ideas. Lemon juice can be utilized as invisible ink, according to Wheeler and Johnson's research. The two concluded that rubbing this lemon juice on their faces would also make their looks undetectable. They covered themselves in lemon juice before they boldly looted the bank. They advised the bewildered tellers not to worry because their faces were invisible while ignoring the stinging in their eyes. They were quickly captured since the bank's workers and cameras had no trouble identifying their undisguised looks. The males were stunned after seeing the security tape. But I was wearing the juice! Detectives heard Wheeler exclaim. The psychologists David Dunning and Justin Kruger were motivated by this case to investigate the problem of persons who are unaware of the limitations of their knowledge. The Dunning-Kruger effect asserts that, including criminals, the most incompetent people tend to be the most sure of their brilliance. On September 5, 2007, Forrest Kelly Bissonette made the decision to rob a bank of the West. He gave the cashier a note that read, Give me all the money in your drawer now. Bissonette's personal bank check, which had his name and account number written on the back, was the paper used to write the note. They were still readable despite his attempts to scribble over them. With $5,000 in his possession, Bissonette fled, and the FBI issued an arrest order for him right afterwards. Later, he turned himself into the authorities. In August 2007, Casey Kazi was given the label Duct Tape Bandit. Kazi made an attempt to rob a liquor shop while wearing duct tape on his face and a t-shirt pulled up over the back of his head. Kazi was caught and detained until the police showed there to arrest him after the amused store owner used a club to chase him out of the establishment. His improvised disguise came off due to the sweating from the struggle, exposing the would-be burglar. Stranger even, despite being captured in the act, Kazi maintained his innocence and maintained that the police had the incorrect suspect. He pleaded guilty after his improbable declaration of innocence was ridiculed, and the duct tape bandit was sentenced to prison. Making a reservation over the phone might help a company get ready for your order and save time. Being unlawful in your business is not very sensible. When Albert Bailey called the Connecticut bank to urge the cashier to get the cash ready because he was on his way to rob them, he learned this. The bank was placed on lockdown after the teller dialed 911, but not before Bailey's young accomplice entered the building with a note threatening a bloodbath during the robbery. A dye pack was supposed to be left out for the notice, however one was nonetheless added to the bag. Both Bailey and the companion were taken into custody after the incident as it burst when the two flung the bag to the ground. In Harrisburg's Metro Bank in March 2011, Daniel Rahines went in and said to the teller there that he was wanting to open an account. Rahines was instantly able to open an account thanks to the helpful staff members, who also took two identification documents for their records. Rahines revealed his secondary goal, to loot the bank, to the teller after he had presented the bank with his ID, Rahines left the bank and sped off in a nearby parked vehicle after snatching a small sum of cash from the startled cashier. He collided with another car a few blocks distant but continued on. The money was quickly recovered by police after they located Rahines. The idea to tunnel into a bank vault by slicing through the roof below the Point on Royal Bank of Scotland came to some unseen criminal geniuses in February 2013. The well-planned heist team's grand scheme contained a weakness. They need to have double-checked the bank's location. Instead, they entered the empty office space next to the bank by breaking through the ceiling. By digging a second hole that did lead to their intended location, entering a different room, the robbers attempted to break into the bank once more. However, they were unable to finish the task and fled with nothing. The neighborhood police are seeking information about a few motivated but disgruntled suspects. <laughs> On 
On September 2, 2018, a male who was not identified entered an e-cigarette shop with the intention of robbing it while wearing Denver Broncos apparel. He pulled out a toy gun and pointed it at the counter employee as he approached. As he took the revolver from his pocket, the Butterfingers bandit lost control of it and threw it over the counter next to the shock shopkeeper. In a fit of rage, the thief tried to leap over the counter to get his gun, but the shopkeeper quickly reached over and grabbed it. The criminal fled, heading for the door after realizing he had been beat. His baggy sweatpants slid down as he kicked open the door to go, further insulting the situation. Perhaps people are ashamed for him to come forward because the would-be robber has still not been found? In October 2019, an armed man who has not been identified attacked a motel in Kentucky. He demanded the entire amount of cash from the clerk while concealing his face and pointing a revolver at her. The cashier brought out numerous bundles of money, laid them out on the counter, and gave the thief a plastic bag to take the treasure home in. The burglar decided that he had to use two hands and put his pistol down on the counter while he stuffed the cash into the bag. Before the robber discovered his error, the quick-thinking cashier grabbed his revolver. He attempted to jump over the counter to retrieve his stolen gun, but as the cashier pulled a revolver at him, he quickly withdrew. For this error, a suspect named Corey Phillips was later detained on accusations of attempting to rob. <laughs> In Philadelphia, a man entered a cell phone store in October 2019 carrying a gun and demanding cash from the employee. The establishment did not keep a lot of cash on hand, so the thief was not pleased with his meager haul. If the thief would just wait inside the store, the employee offered to go get the money for the shooter. The employee informed the robber that another employee out the front had the remaining cash. The thief consented, and the employee left the establishment while the thief was still inside, shutting the door. The deceived criminal panicked and attempted to shoot his way out, shooting 10 bullets and creating 7 bullet holes in the front of the store, but he was stuck. When the police arrived, they immediately impounded Sean Brown inside the shop. Unable to prepare ahead, two Australian friends living in Vail, Colorado, decided on the spur of the moment to rob a bank, which resulted in a number of mistakes. The two burglars arrived at the scene disguised. For starters, they were still wearing their job attire, replete with name badges. Additionally, they made no attempt to hide their distinctive Australian accents, which stood out in Colorado. They attacked a cashier and took over $100,000 in cash while holding realistic-looking BB weapons. The careless thieves almost quickly left a money trail that served as evidence. They spent the money they had stolen at adjacent establishments, purchasing a Rolex watch, tickets to Mexico, and a $20,000 bonus for the cab driver. In case there was any mistake, they even posed for photos while clutching the fanned out riches. The investigators claimed that the time it took to find the offenders was less than 10 minutes. <laughs> Thanks for watching and see you soon.